So you're hearing all kinds of things. Oh, the sky is falling. They're going to lay everybody off. Ah! You know, this is the drama that media is trying to create. And uh, so I'm going to tell you where we are and then where I think we might be going. So here we go. Uh, USA Today reports Amazon plans to lay off 10,000 employees. Uh, uh, if it hasn't already happened this week, the New York Times also reported on it. The reported layoffs would affect about 3% of Amazon's corporate employees. Listen to this, 3%. Okay, The company has more than 1.5 million workers worldwide. Now, I am not in any way minimizing layoffs. But this is a small portion of a very, very large workforce, a workforce that I've already reported on the show because Jeff Bezos is a horrible boss, no matter what he tries to tell you, that they burn through people at a, an alarming rate and they're not even worried about attrition. Well, now they're laying people off. Why? Their profits are down. People are spending less. The inflation's real. So they're not shopping on Amazon as much. All right? This is not the end of the world. This is called big companies who care a lot about big profits. When those profits start to shrink, guess what they do? They start cutting expenses. Uh, Facebook has obviously laid off 11,000 employees. That's about 13% of its workforce. Now, that, again, is not so much an indictment of our job economy. It is more about how bad Facebook is. It just is. It's a, it is an indictment on their business strategies and all the other negative media that they've gotten. So these are somewhat isolated. The weekly jobless claims report from the Labor Department on Thursday, uh, which is the most timely data on the economy's health as it relates to jobs, suggested that the labor market is still tight. What does that mean when we hear that? It simply means that there are more jobs available than there are people who are unemployed or filing for unemployment. I've already told you there's 7 million able-bodied men who are choosing to not work. They're not even filing for unemployment. They just ain't working. So we still have uh, more jobs available than people are unemployed, and so that's why it's keeping the job market really hot. Uh, actual claims for unemployment dropped for the week ending November 12th. Now, is this just tech? Because we've been talking a lot about tech layoffs. Been a lot of tech layoffs, been some real estate layoffs. You're seeing mortgage companies lay people off. But again, that is a normal cycle for mortgage companies when rates tend to go up. And then people start to slow down on refis uh, and buying homes. And that is what is happening. So that's a normal attrition rate for these companies. We are not seeing across the board layoffs. So there's no reason to freak out. Should you be vigilant? Yes. More on that shortly. How about Disney? Disney plans a hiring freeze and layoffs to cut cost. Uh, CNBC has got an uh, actual memo from, from the CEO, Bob Chappick. This is a direct statement from the memo. We are limiting headcount additions throughout uh, through a targeted hiring freeze. Hiring for a small subset of the most critical business driving positions will continue, but other roles are on hold. He goes on to say, as we work through this evaluation process, we will look at every avenue of operations and labor to find savings, and we do anticipate some staff reductions as a part of this review. So again, uh, if you go deeper into that article and you look at the business-by-business business situation, Disney streaming revenues are down big time. I'm a customer, a Disney Plus, but guess what? I was telling my wife the other night, Alex, I can't remember the last time I've watched something new on Disney Plus. I probably should. I know they got some Star Wars things on there, but Thanksgiving is coming. And so when I am uh, laying on the couch, allowing the turkey to have its way with me and take me to nappy nappy land, I will probably watch or at least attempt to watch some of these new Star Wars shows. But but here's what's happening. Netflix profits down. So you're seeing these streaming services are cutting costs because customers are in some cases, tightening their belt. In other cases, going, why am I paying $14.99 a month for this? I haven't watched it lately. I mean, this is just, you know, normal attrition. Why do I go through all this? Because the sensational fear that the media likes to create to keep you watching that show that you're watching, or more importantly, to watch that stupid scrolling thing that's going on while the show happened. But by the way, you know, that came about as a result of 9-11 one of the most horrific, tragic days in American history. 
and it was where we were glued to the TVs. And so they were trying to get extra information out. Well, don't you know that has stayed? And, and, and so what is this all about? Well, they're trying to freak you out here with the anchor talking. And then they're also keeping your attention and freaking you out with the scroll. And so I'm just pointing out that we need to step back from that stuff and realize that the entire objective of the news is to hold our attention. And they don't hold your attention by going, all right, folks, uh, welcome to blank, 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 nightly news. Uh, things are fantastic. Things are great. Go about your business. No, they hold you. So, uh, there's not enough evidence for anybody who is a serious person and takes their influence in the microphone or, or whatever bully pulpit they have seriously, like the Ken Coleman show, to be able to predict that we're going to see massive layoffs in 2023. Nobody knows. We've also just had a national election where you've got now divided government. And so you've got a Republican-held Congress and you've got a Democrat-held White House and Senate, no matter what happens in Georgia. So you've got divided government, and I just want to put everybody at ease. You're not going to see a whole lot of major policy change that would affect your finances in the next two years. You're just not. You're just not. So stop looking at Washington, D.C. Stop looking at all the mainstream media and, and worrying. Now, what do you do if you do get laid off? Because, again, you could. And, and and we obviously are in a season right now where there have been more layoffs, okay, than there have been in, in quite some time. But it doesn't mean that this is a big ripple effect. But we wrote an article at RamseySolutions.com entitled, What to Do If You're Laid Off, okay? And we could also say fired, okay? Um because the bottom line is you've lost your job. So I want to walk through just a couple of very practical things. First, these are negative emotions. If you've been laid off because the company's tightening up, understand, number one, this isn't personal. You are, unfortunately, a casualty of the company's balance sheet. It's not personal. If you're laid off with a large group of people or even a small group of people, and the reason is we've got to cut jobs, and that's what's happening, understand it's not personal, meaning you're not a loser. You're not a failure. However, let me also say in the very same breath, it sucks and it doesn't feel good and it feels personal. It's not personal, but it feels personal. So I want to be very clear. The first thing we say in this article, and again, I'm not going to do a deep dive. You can go read it. By the way, it's uh, what to do if you're laid off. Oh, it's at KenColeman.com. Oh, very nice. It should be. What to do if you're laid off, KenColeman.com. All right. First, we got to get these negative emotions out of us, and we got to get them to a professional counselor if needed, or to people in our life that are truth tellers are going to kind of help us get calm. Let's get the feelings out. So that's connecting with friends and family or a professional, just to get all the negative feelings out of our system and begin the process of healing and moving forward. Second, you got to tighten the budget. When anytime we hit some uncertainty, it's just like when a big old storm comes through. I grew up on the coast of Virginia. We'd get hurricane threats and tropical storms all the time. What do you do? When you got a big windy storm coming like that and you're worried about storm surge, what do we do? People are battening down the hatches, if you will, plywood on windows, getting sandbags out. Why? Well, we're just going to be careful. We, we want to prepare for a storm. And so that's the same financially. Tighten the budget a little bit. Okay? Find out what benefits you have as a part of you being laid off. Maybe there's some benefits that you weren't aware of that can help you weather the storm. But here's the deal. You're not a loser. Get over it. Get busy. Keep on moving.